he fashioned his career. He's actually quoted as saying, John, that it was Terry who helped him to fight. Maybe a couple of years ago he was giving up too easily, but he's fighting now. Yeah, it's just sometimes you might lose your appetite for it a little bit, and uh, obviously that's rekindled. Okay, well, John thinks it's going all the way. We'll soon see. Interesting little exchange. What a good kiss on the yellow dog. But Mark Williams let the referee, Jan Verhaas, have a look, he said, because it was such a thin snick, so that he would have known where to put the white back into the same position again. It was quite interesting. Wow. Yes, and how thinly he snicked it, going across it. He hardly moved it. Foul. The miss. Mark Williams. Doherty's glancing escape fails. Referee Jan Verhaas replaces the cue ball under uh, the proud gaze of his parents yeah. who keep a snooker club in Rotterdam. Foul and a miss. Mark Williams for. I think he'll be having another go at that. There's nothing from Mark to pot. He had a quick look. So just, he doesn't want to hit it too thick. So somewhere there, just to snick that red or the one, two yep. behind the pink. Somewhere near that line should, but he doesn't want to hit this full ball. Yeah. He hasn't caught the green, has he? No. Good escape. Going back, Clive, to the sports psychology thing, we've had sports psychologists in athletics for years, but a 100-meter runner can mentally rehearse a race. How do you mentally rehearse 17 days at the Crucible? Not easy. I think uh, things can be done about mental attitude, the way you look at things. He fluked it. Well, it's an easy red. There's an easy green over the pocket, but it uh, be interesting to see where this cue ball finishes up here because the red's so close to the pocket. I'm just wondering if he's going to take a chance and try and open the reds with it. One. He's got a similar problem because the green's quite close to the pocket, so it's not easy to control the cue ball. white back up the table it was very difficult Four. look at the green the blue and the brown to get in behind big target Kandofati four You 
could hear a pin drop in the Crucible Theatre at the moment. And they're loving every single minute of this. Black, that was the big thing. But a chance for Williams. One. And the pink was safe, the black was difficult to get anywhere near, but it was a good pot. Mark Williams won. Yes, he couldn't avoid the cannon, which left him out of position. <laughs> this looks good. Halfway. He seemed to rush that. He just got down. Oh, and a miss. Can Didn't give that one a lot of thought. About a foot short. Yeah, he just wanted to nestle into them so he didn't disturb too much. And but he did play it rather quickly. You were the rest. Uh, he's one of the best in the game. I'm using the rest, but he's left another tempter for Mark. It's all about where the white's going to go. And go towards the middle pocket, I feel, if he misses the red. He hasn't missed the red. Too thin a contact. First glance, he hasn't left a very good chance here, the way the colours are situated. One. You can do with getting up onto the pink or black in a couple of shots time. <coughs> this could be a chance to get the black back on its spot. Three. I'm sure you can drop this red in and leave a fairly straightforward black. <laughs> Anywhere near the circle, he wouldn't have to use the rest. Eleven. 
19. If you haven't made your mind up, get up on the shot chalk the queue and then get back down again. In the semi-final, he played a few where he hadn't quite made his mind up and he missed a couple of straightforward pots. He hasn't done that in the final. Not sure, he gets back up and starts all over again. 20. If you haven't told your brain clearly what you want to do, how can you do it? Clarity of mind is all in this game. And uh, Doherty has sustained his clarity incredibly well over the 17 days. Himself a bit straight on this red. 27. He's just telling his friend there he's a bit too straight on this. This is going to take a good shot. 28. Now he needs a good cannon. He's got to make sure of the black. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Maybe just a slight bad contact, having the cue ball cleaned there, but he's got a shot here. If the white finishes anywhere near the pink, he'll leave five reds on. Two to the right corner, two to the left corner, one to the middle. Little stun shot has given him a choice feet. of <coughs> two to the corner, but these are well placed. 44. A, a bad shot he's played there. That's a careless one. He's tried to nudge that out of the way, and it's blocked the pink. Good recovery. Oh, yeah. Fifty-one. Fifty-two. I can't believe the standard they're producing here, Clive, under these circumstances. This is the final of the Embassy World Championship. Do they realise that? Brilliant. They were pretty nervy early in the session, but they played the nerves out of themselves. Colour Doherty has passed the post in this frame. Fifty nine. Just looking at the breaks, 65. From, it's been 12 each, incredible, 115, 92, 87, 66. 120, 64, and this.
79. 80. 87. 88. 92. 94. It's difficult to win this title. No champion would have played more frames. 97. Every match but one has gone the full distance. 101. And so could this. Just over eight minutes for this fabulous, fabulous break. A century, a break of 112 leaves the match level with three to play. It's 16 all. This Irishman has a cast iron nerve. It's absolutely unbelievable what he's doing here. And what does it do to Mark, seeing that he just cannot shake this fellow off? Well, after the interval, Mark's pumped two big frames into him. like a couple of digs in the solar plexus. And, and Ken's just taken him and come back and smacked him around the head a couple of times with a couple <laughs> more. I mean, they're just slugging it out. I mean, you don't see this often. And it's great when two players start together, uh, just going at each other. What's going to happen? I mean, somebody's going to make a mistake. It's going to look like a calamity compared to what we've seen. But at some stage, something strange is going to happen. There's going to be a kick. I won't say the word. There's going to be something happens, and it's going to turn things, and three more frames to go. Well, Clive Everton was making the point that this could be the hardest fault and hardest won title ever if Ken were to do it. How impressive has he been throughout? Well, extremely. I honestly cannot believe what he's had to put up with and withstand and still playing near the, in the last session of the Crucible to that standard. He has just played two marvellous frames to get back in it. And what, you know, we keep going on how many frames he's played to get here. That was just absolutely brilliant. And Mark Williams is playing great as well. Well, let's put it in context. Before we started today, Mark Williams had conceded 19 frames. Ken had conceded 45. It's an extraordinary achievement that he's still here and kicking. Yes, um, so re really you, you would expect uh, you know, that, that both players are, are in different sort of shapes coming into this uh, situation, but really they're both such great match players. just crossed my mind that if, uh, if Ken wins, we'll all have a, a psychologist on the circuit with us next year, and if, of course, Mark wins, we'll all be uh, knocking on Terry's door. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we had a thriller last year, Peter Edden nicking it in the final frame against Stephen Hendry. John, you're convinced it's going to be... A similar situation this time. I just can't. I, I can't see any other result because when one goes ahead, the other one comes back. And I just. It, I mean, I may prove to be wrong, but it's just looking more and more likely. Well, is it going all the way again? It's